Welcome to episode three of Behind the Membership. In today's episode, I'm talking to Avalon Yarns from Avalon Cake School. And one of the things Avalon shares is how she went all in on her membership and just took that leap of faith that this was going to be the right thing for her. Another awesome thing that Avalon shares is how she actually used what a competitor was doing to create a great retention hook for her own membership site. And I absolutely love what Avalon implemented here and how creative she's been with her membership. That said, let's jump straight into episode three. Welcome to Behind the Membership with Callie Willows. Real people, real stories, real memberships. Today I'm joined by Avalon Yarns from Avalon Cakes and I have to admit I never knew quite how artistic cake could be until I saw a replica of Bill Murray that Avalon had made just from cake and yeah jaw-dropping seriously talented (laughs) stuff there. Um, So thanks for joining me on the show today Avalon. I'm really looking forward to chatting with you about your membership and I'm really going to try hard to stop thinking about cake. (laughs) Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm a big fan of yours too, as you already know. But hi. (laughs) Hi. (laughs) So if we dive straight in, your membership's Avalon Cakes School. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about the membership, who it's for, what it offers, and just the general gist? Sure. So I have an online platform is what I like to call it for uh, creatives that enjoy making really high end, um, elaborate cake art. I don't even like to call it cake decorating because to me it's art. It's art all the way. So, um, that's something I like to drill into my students or my members heads that it's cake art. But, um, so we, offer video tutorials, picture-based tutorials, uh, recipes, tools, community at a monthly price. So it's a reoccurring membership and um, it's geared towards just the creative side of cake decorating. So we're not really teaching people how to run a business or anything business-based, not really my specialty. So my specialty is definitely the art. So we're just kind of teaching them all the things. <laughs> That's kind of my catchphrase too. Cake all the things. Um, I actually put that on a t-shirt. But um, yeah, so we, we teach people through video tutorials and it's it's been great so far. It sounds like a pretty awesome kind of site and I think it sounds like a great way to kind of embrace your artistic side as well, but with another passion of mine, food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Combining all the senses, all yeah. the things. Yeah, I think that cake decorating is like at the top of the pyramid in the art world. This is, of course, my personal <laughs> biased opinion, but um, I really, I hold it high up there because you're taking food and you're making it look like something completely different where people are like, wait, that's food? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive stuff. Um, I, I'm always impressed by your Instagram there. Do you, out of interest, find are most of your members kind of people that are doing it for business or is it people doing it as kind of a hobby? You know, it's, it's a half and half mix. I actually did a survey last year and it was literally 50-50. Um, a lot of people do it out of their homes. So they have either like a home-based business or um, they're hobbyists. I have a small amount that actually have a brick and mortar kind of business. So that's another reason why, because a lot of people would love business advice too. I know they would, um, but I don't feel like I'm prepared or uh, that I have the experience (laughs) to actually give that on each of those levels because there are so many different levels of business side of cake decorating. So yeah, it's like half hobbyists half cake business people. Cool. And what gave you the idea to to create the membership in the first place? Well, um, there was a few things that went into it. So I've started, I've been cake decorating for about 10 years. Two of those years, I was not very good, (laughs) but for about 10 years, I had been cake decorating and I was doing it on the side. So I actually worked in a bakery for the first 10 years. And I wasn't doing the kind of cake decorating that I'm doing now, but I was doing that on the side. That was Avalon cakes and I loved it. And I was learning so much and I, you know, I was doing it at night after work and 
I was doing some client cakes on the weekends, but it wasn't my full-time job. Um, but I really got into just like exploring with it and perfecting it. And I really wanted to start sharing everything that I had learned and just sharing. I just, there was so much that I wanted to share. So I started doing some one-off tutorials. So I would start selling individual tutorials on something really cool that I had created or figured out and just really wanted to share with people. So me and my boyfriend, Zach, we started filming and selling these. And we had done, I think, about six of them. And at the time, I was working at the bakery that I had been working at for 10 years. And I had kind of made my way up the ranks to the buyer of all of the corporate offices. And it was very obvious to them. And I knew that my passion wasn't there for them. My passion was, and my focus was on Avalon cakes and they could see that. And one day they demoted me. So I was in this position where, okay, I could either go back and work in the kitchen at the bakeries for them, or I could maybe go a different direction because we had been selling these one-off tutorials and I was starting to realize they were doing really well and people were liking them. And I thought, you know, maybe we have something here. So me and my boyfriend had a conversation that night. We're just like, well, what are we going to do? Cause I'm not going back to the bakery. <laughs> and I just, I really enjoy this teaching thing. And I had a membership in the back of my head for a little while. There was a few other people in the industry doing it. And I was like, that's a reoccurring income that I can count on. And that's kind of predictable. And we don't have to worry about, is this tutorial going to do well this month? Um, so that night we decided we were going to go all in and we had enough money saved up to last us about six months. So we had this deadline. We had six months to get our butts in gear, to get content created and a website out. It actually ended up taking about eight months, but we made the money uh, work because him and I were both out of a job. So this was our whole thing. Like we put all of our eggs in one basket and yeah. So <laughs> basically I got the inspiration from a lot of what I was seeing online and I just really thought it could work considering, you know, all the tutorials I was already creating and seeing the success with that. Awesome. I love that you kind of, you both jumped all in on it. <laughs> yeah, that. we did. <laughs> he has, he's always been super, super supportive. So that's, that's been super helpful. And he actually happened to come out here. He's from Memphis. He came out here to go to um, film school. So he had already had the video background and he knew what he was doing. So it all kind of just like came together. Yeah. It was together well. <laughs> <Isn't> it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so do you, um, you started off with selling the individual tutorials. Do you still sell them as well or just the membership now? I do. I still sell individual tutorials for people that are interested in just um, a particular tutorial, but I really try to make it so that they can see the value in the membership versus just buying individually. So they can see that they can get all the tutorials. <laughs> so yeah, all I think the go that direction. <laughs> yeah. And do you have a community as part of the membership or is it predominantly the content? I do. So we have a Facebook community, um, a private Facebook group. And we do Facebook Lives in there, which is really fun. Um, and now I know that a lot of people do. We actually tried to make the, the community work on the website itself. I used BuddyPress when we first started. And I just it just wasn't working. It was too much work for me. And my community lives on Facebook. The Facebook cake community is big. It's huge. It's thriving. So that's where my people were. And it was very much um, a visual thing, cake decorating, obviously. Yeah. Now we're constantly trying to share each other's work and get advice. So Facebook was the perfect uh, place for me to do that. So we decided to move over to a Facebook group and we love it. I love my Facebook group. They're like, they're the heart of Avalon Cakes for sure. Cool. And do you do anything in particular to, you mentioned Facebook Live. So do you do anything in particular to get engagement in that group? Or do you find that you kind of, you've been going long enough now that people just kind of take care of the community themselves? Honestly, they do. They take care of the community themselves. Um, because like I said, there are so many 
people in the cake community on Facebook already. There was already all these groups. They kind of just like knew how to interact. And now, you know, it's a smaller group because they have all these massive free groups on Facebook for cake decorating. So I think a lot of them were really excited to have this smaller group where they could talk more on an intimate level. And then I was in there too. So they all, you know, they all talked to each other and I found it really surprising that, you know, they would ask a question in the group and I always felt like, okay, I need to go answer that question. I need to answer that question. But so many of them help each other and, it, like half the time I don't even have to answer the question because somebody already answered it perfectly. <laughs> I'm just like, this is amazing. <laughs> so it's been great. Awesome. And so how long has it actually been up and running for now, the membership? It'll be two years in September. So one month after you guys started yours. Which is- yeah, there seemed to have been a lot of memberships start that, that fall. I think people must have been kind of something in the water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, so you're you're in year two now coming up on year starting year three do you think much has actually changed since you first launched the site um yes <laughs> and no um I when I first started the site I knew nothing about internet marketing I didn't know like I, I just kind of jumped in head first started looking at membership plugins and you know I had just made a WordPress website for my regular cake decorating company I was like oh this is fun I can do this so I made the whole thing from scratch and but I didn't know anything about the marketing side and I kind of just went with my intuition I had a really big following on Facebook already which was great and which was super helpful but um Now, you know, I've kind of started to exhaust my Facebook following, I feel like, you know, I've, I've tapped into that. And now I'm starting to do other internet marketing type of things. And I'm learning about lead magnets and funnels and all these other things, you know. (laughs) And so for me right now, the changes are happening in the marketing and how to get people in the door. Cool. And so what do you think has been the biggest challenge with the membership over that time then? Would you say it is that kind of learning the new marketing or something else? Um, well, the biggest challenge for me in general is the time constraint and the nurturing that the membership site requires. Um, you know, there's things I would have done differently if I could change it now. I wouldn't have probably promised as much and blah, blah, blah. We could go into that for hours. <laughs> but, um, I think for me, it's, letting go of some of the control because I wear pretty much all the hats. You know, I'm the marketer, I'm the the website person, I'm the graphic designer, I'm the creative, I'm the person that comes up with all the tutorials. And there's just so many things to do. And I think my biggest uh, challenge is actually letting go and maybe hiring some people in to help with that. Um, But yeah, just being able to find that life business balance that's my biggest challenge being able to find the time and I love my job that's the that's the problem too is like I want to be doing it but yeah yeah. yeah, I'm sure you know the life I think that's the the perennial membership owner challenge I think where you kind of at least initially in the first you know year two years you kind of want to be doing all the things yourself and then And then it gets harder to let go of all the things because you've been doing them all. So it's kind of, you reach that point where you know you need to be handing stuff off, Mm -hmm. but there's a little bit of a gap before you kind of actually start doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. There's that like, um, but I could just do it. Let me just do it. Instead (laughs) of trying to explain it to you, I'm just going to do it. And then four days later, like, oh my God, oh, my time is gone. Yeah. (laughs) I have to recommend it though. We've got a team now and it, I, I am a control freak. So I thought I would struggle with it, but it's actually been awesome. And now I'm like, give away all the things you can do. <laughs> Asana, Asana. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually have a VA now, so that's been lovely. But you know, there's all that time that goes into training. So there's like that transition period. And so the time is still not there. <laughs> yeah. It'll come. <laughs> <laughs> So if that's the the challenge, what's been the highlight or your favorite thing about the membership? Um, My highlight has definitely been 
the members creating the tutorials, recreating the tutorials and being excited and thrilled in showing me their work because that is the most fulfilling part, knowing that I'm doing my job right and that they're able to take what I showed them and actually recreate it like that. And they're super excited about it and they're happy about it and they're sharing it and they love it. And that's just like the most fulfilling thing for me with the type of um, membership site I have. Yeah, I mean, that's what you're doing it for at the end of the day for, for helping people to get results. So seeing that is a pretty awesome feeling. It is. It's amazing. The <laughs> reoccurring income is great too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Love that. <laughs> Yeah, that is a, I was going to say a bonus, but it's pretty much the reason most of us start doing it in the first place. It's just <laughs> truth. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's shift gears a little bit now and talk about what you're doing to actually grow Avalon Cake School. In terms of getting people through the door, bringing in new members, what's something that's worked really well for you? Um, because my membership, well, my avatar or whatever you want to call it. My uh, client is on Facebook. That's where most of my people are. Um, creating trailers of our video tutorials and um, creating hype around the tutorials themselves have worked really well for us. Um, you know, Facebook changes with its algorithms all the time. So things aren't as active as they used to be when I first started doing this. So I'm starting to, you know, go into actually paid advertising with Facebook. And that's been really great. I'm starting to go into the, the lead magnet and funnel uh, realm, which is fun. <laughs> but that's actually been doing really well, too. So um, for me right now, it would be advertising on social media and just getting them to visually see what the tutorial is all about. And, um, for, for my people, that's, that's what they need to do. They need to see what they're going to get. And then, um, offering a little bit of the free tutorials through the lead magnets and let, cause right now we have just some free stuff out there that they can grab, which is a video that is taken from a lesson that's already in the school. So they can kind of see the quality they're going to get and all of that before they sign up. And that's usually the thing that pushes them through the door. Yeah. I love it when you can actually give members a taste of, of what they're going to have really, because it really helps to, especially in such a visual market as yours, it really helps people to actually see what they're getting. Yes. It's been amazing watching that, um, convert so quickly. I didn't think it was going to convert as quickly as it did. And it really has. So that's been rewarding. <laughs> I remember as well. Um, I think it might have been earlier this year or end of last year. You did a, you had a guest tutor and you did like an Adele parody video, which was absolutely genius. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. We like to, um, Zach, he, you know, he's into film. So, we want them to have fun every once in a while. So we do some fun little improv um, type introductions every time we have a guest instructor. So we'll just do some skits and uh, just kind of wing it. And But with her, we really planned it out. Obviously, it was like the hello from the other side, Adele remix. Um, <laughs> it was super fun. And she every time she sees a new student they come up to her and they, they start singing it to her so she's she's super thrilled with it that was a lot of fun yeah I thought I thought that was absolutely genius <laughs> thank you <laughs> it was it was good stuff <laughs> um okay so once someone actually joins your site what do you do to keep them coming back from more month after month um I mean I think our our tutorials you know we always trying to bring something new and innovative to the membership with the tutorials themselves, but we have created a few different things that I thought, um, or that I think that really help. So we have something called download points, as you know, Callie, <laughs> but, um, basically our members get a certain amount of points every 30 days of membership and they can take these points and they can use them to purchase to purchase these tutorials to keep forever. So even if they cancel, they get to keep these tutorials. So the benefit of that, I think, is that they get to see these points stack up and 
it also takes that feeling of risk away. So, um, you know, that risk of like, I'm just throwing my money away. Cause not really, you're actually just throwing it back into purchasing a tutorial. And since all of this is digital for me, it's not really a big loss or anything. Um, but it usually, they end up staying for a long time because they realize that they're just getting a lot of value for their money anyway. Uh, yeah, I think the the download point system for the kind of site you've got where you can you can have those tutorials to download is a, a great idea. And did you actually have that from the start of the membership or did you add that in later? I didn't. So um, one of my competitors actually uh, gives her students the tutorial every month on one of her tiers. So one of her tiers, you get the tutorial of that month. And I had some students that were messaging me saying, well, what do we get? <laughs> Cause it's such a small community. So it's small, but it's big, you know? Um, but it's, it's a small world kind of community. And they're like, I just feel like I'm kind of throwing away my money and which they aren't, but that's what some of them said. And I was like, okay, well, how do I combat this? How do I give them some kind of value where they can't argue that anymore. Um, and I, so that's when I came up with the whole point system. I wanted to be able to have something similar, but different so they can get whatever they want. They're not just going to get the tutorial that I'm putting out that month. They get to choose and they get to earn the points. Oh, and they can also earn points in different ways. So they can earn points from sharing something on Pinterest. They can earn points from sharing something on Facebook. So it's also helping me move along um, sharing, you know, so I'm getting people to see more um, advertisements through just members sharing stuff. I love that you took a, a kind of something a competitor was doing and which was challenging kind of your members perception and turn that into something that not only helped with retention and gamifies the site and helps with your marketing stuff. I think that's, you know, such a clever thing to do. And a lot of people kind of, I don't think would have quite looked at things that way. Oh, thank you. I was like, I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> gotta do something about this. <laughs> so. Yeah. I don't think it's a great example of what you can do to combat that kind of thing with a, a site like this. So yeah, awesome work there. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, Okay, so let's talk about life as a membership site owner now. So what does a typical day look like for you now you're running the membership? You're, it's a full-time business for you, isn't it? Yes, yeah. definitely. Um, for me, it's wake up at 8 o'clock in the well, no, 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, get my coffee, come down, and get on the computer. I never thought I would be on the computer as much as I am. Um, I think I always thought that this was going to be like freedom, you know, but of course I make, I do this to myself, obviously. Um, but I get on the computer, I start checking emails, I get into the member group and see how everyone's doing, see if there's any questions. And then I'll start going through my tasks that I need to do. So, um, usually that's me either brainstorming on the next tutorial or brainstorming on how to make the site better and convert better, um, figuring out marketing uh, things and just trying to figure out how to keep the needle moving. <laughs> so it's constant. It's constant. And for me right now, it is pretty much seven days a week, 24-7, um, 24-7, but it feels like it, you know. Uh, Hopefully that will change soon. I would like to get weekends back. <laughs> That's something I look forward to. But uh, just try to get some funnels going, you know, or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get some processes in place and get your weekends back. Exactly. But yeah, with your content, so you mentioned your tutorials. So do you create those in advance or do you kind of do them monthly as you go? We do the monthly as we go. There's so much research and development that goes into every tutorial. And partly that's because I'm stubborn and I just really want to always be trying to be innovative and different. Um, whereas sometimes I'm sure I could just make something that I know and I've done a million times before and stubborn and I try to, you know, I, I'm just, I want to be creative. So it takes about twice the time to research and develop what we're going to do. And then it takes about a day to film. 
So right now we are pretty much filming the same month that we are putting out the tutorial. And I would, that's one of my biggest goals is that's one of our biggest goals is to try to get that, um, on a system, try to get stuff done more ahead of time and try to get that in check because that is definitely the most time consuming thing for us. Cool. And you obviously kind of had a process in place because you were creating the tutorials before you had the membership. So did you find that you needed to kind of change anything on the content front or was that kind of already in place and you built the membership around that? Yeah, it was kind of already in place. We built the membership around that. Um, I think it was really nice when we did switch over from buddy press to the Facebook group, because then I realized I could do some live stuff, which of course, you know, takes away that whole aspect of editing, which can be so time consuming. Um, so that has been really nice. And, uh, we've been having a lot of guests to, uh, sorry. We've had a lot of guest tutors come in and do pictorials and stuff like that, which has taken a little bit of pressure off of me, uh, so that's been great, but yeah, yeah, it's pretty much the same. It's just go, go, go and <laughs> content treadmill. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Get them on the wheel. <laughs> so overall then what impact would you say having a membership sites had on your life and your business? Um, it has had an amazing impact on my life and my business. I mean, we're set financially. We're very happy financially. We have freedom, even though we don't always allow it to ourselves. We have freedom. We could take a week off whenever we want, really. Um, and there's just like this huge amount of pride in having something like this for myself. And, you know, there's just a huge amount of pride in having your own business and not putting all your time and effort into someone else's dream putting it into your own dream. And that's been just huge for us. It's just, this is our baby. I don't know. I don't have any kids or anything. This is my baby. And, um, it's been the best decision I've ever made. I'm extremely happy with it. Oh, so that's great to hear. <laughs> it's always good when the decision to go all in works yeah. the best. Yes. I love it. Um, so if you went back to the beginning then, and you did kind of touch on this a little bit earlier, but if you could reset and start again, what's the one thing, if anything, that you would do differently? Um, oh, the one thing? Are you count? <laughs> you can have more than one if you want. <laughs> okay. Well, I would have used, I would have, honestly, I would have started like, okay, so I wish you guys were around, obviously, when I had started, because like you said, you started a month before I did. Um, but if you guys were around and I had found you, it would have been so much easier. <laughs> um, just because, you know, researching all of the different membership plugins and figuring out what's going to work the best. And you're getting all these different biased opinions from different affiliates and you know, you don't know what to believe. And so I would have probably changed the membership plugin that I used just to be a little bit more friendly to my needs, um, accommodating to my needs. And then, um, I definitely wouldn't have offered two tiers of membership. So I offer a classic membership and I also offer a premium membership. So, and I, I just made too complicated. So I really just wish I would have had the one membership and that was just it. But, um, I think that was the number one thing I would have changed because it's kind of been a pain. So what's actually the difference between the classic and the premium? So the classic membership, um, see, it's, it's even hard to explain. That's not a good thing. The classic membership includes all classic tutorials. So these are more basic tutorials. Um, we usually put out two of these a month. The premium membership Okay, and it has some other tools and stuff, right? So we have the cake calculator and uh, stuff like that. The premium membership, you get a premium tutorial along with everything in the classic. So we do a premium tutorial every other month. And that's usually like a really big, um, impressive cake. So something um, that you really, you know, you get excited about. Um, and then you get some access to some extra tools and you get more download points and stuff like that. So it's, it would have been much easier just to 
put it all together and <laughs> do it that way instead of, you know, now I have this obligation to do a premium every other month and it's confusing for people too. So, but I don't know at this point how I could ever change that. So I'm kind of stuck with it. <laughs> Out of interest, how do you, how does the kind of the sign up rates between the two, are they fairly equal or do you find the classics more predominant? Uh, actually the premium is more predominant. Yeah. We've got about 70% on premium. And I think it's because, you know, the tutorial that they end up seeing and liking happens to be under the premium tier. So they need to get it. Um, but they, they're happy to pay it. It's only $10 more a month. And I think, yeah. So we've got about 30% under classic. Right. That's yeah. I mean, if most people are going for the higher tier, that that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it works. It's just would have been way easier to do it the other way. <laughs> this is a completely unrelated question, but it's something I always want to ask. Which is, do you actually end up eating the cakes because they always <laughs> look too nice to actually eat? It's no, like art. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to like ruin it. <laughs> I never eat my cakes ever. Um, so the, the reason why, besides you know the fact that. Uh, I'm gluten free now <laughs> is that it's basically sitting there for like a week after the entire process. So, you know, we take three days to make it and then it sits there because I don't have time to take pictures of it yet. Like I literally have a cake in there that's been there sitting in there for like a month. <laughs> Gross. It's probably moldy on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> but um because I you know you just need to finish all of the promo stuff so yeah no I don't eat it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it always just looks too nice I wouldn't want to ruin it <laughs> and we just throw it away instead which is sad. <laughs> really sad um so what does the future hold then what's next for for you and the school um I think what's next is that life balance <laughs> I mean, that's my goal. So um, that's always been my goal is to have some time for ourselves and to be able to dive into some other things that we enjoy doing. So for us, it's just getting systems and everything else worked out so that we do have that time. And um, But other than that, I think we, yeah, we just want to get smooth sailing, you know? That's our goal. Awesome. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing how you kind of continue to grow and evolve. I think, you know, yeah. two years in, it's going strong. So the future is going to be even more awesome. And yeah, getting that kind of that extra time back so you can enjoy your, your enjoy your spoils, essentially. Yes, got to enjoy the life. You only got one of them. So <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Um, okay, so. Before we go then, if anyone wants to find out more about you or look at some cake porn, where can they actually connect with you? <laughs> um, AvalonCakeSchool.com or you can get on our Facebook site, our Facebook page, sorry, <laughs> which is just Facebook.com backslash AvalonCakes. Awesome. I'll make sure those links are underneath the show notes as well. Um, so that's been great. Thank you. I think the last question I wanted to ask was just if somebody was thinking of starting a membership site, what's your one piece of advice that you would kind of give to them? I'm going to shamelessly plug for you guys. <laughs> it's really the truth. Like I would have just um, joined the member site Academy and learn how to do it the right way. That's my <laughs> advice. <laughs> Well, thank you. The check's in the post on that one. <laughs> do you have an affiliate program? Yes, you do. <laughs> but I'm not one. Uh, well, that was awesome. Thanks so much for your time, Avalon. And it's been great to have you on the show and hear a bit more about your journey and all the things that you're working on. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Behind the Membership podcast and thanks once again to Avalon Yarns for joining me on today's show and telling us all about her membership journey. You can find more about Avalon at avalonscakeschool.com and you can also find that link and any others mentioned in the show over at themembershipguys.com slash btm3. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this episode and any tips that you're going to implement. So please do let me know over in our free Facebook group at talkmemberships.com. Thanks for listening. 
If you've enjoyed today's episode of Behind the Membership, we invite you to check out the membersiteacademy.com. The Member Site Academy is the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing and running a membership website. So whether you're still figuring out what your idea is going to be or whether your website is already up and running and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members, then the Member Site Academy can help you to get to the next level. With our extensive course library, monthly training, exclusive member-only discount perks and tools and a supportive active community to help you along the way with feedback encouragement and advice the member site academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start manage and grow a successful membership website so check it out at membersiteacademy.com